Hi, and welcome to the Microsoft Virtual Academy, our session on the 20 C-sharp questions explained. My name is Jerry O'Brien, and I'm joined today by Paul Party as we step through these 20 all-important questions on C-sharp for new developers. What we're basically covering here are some of the questions, the most commonly asked questions by developers in using C-sharp as a language for some of their coding and um, uh, application programming issues that they're running into. This particular segment focuses on uh, question number 11 out of the 20 in the sequence, and we're going to we're going to focus on encrypting and decrypting strings in .NET. Um, encryption and decryption become very important when you want to ensure that some of the data that you're transmitting back and forth um, cannot be intercepted by somebody, or if it is, does get intercepted by somebody during that transmission, they can't actually read it because it's in an encrypted form. And we've got a couple of different forms of encryption that we can use. There's one known as symmetric encryption, in which case we use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the values of the string or whatever it is that we're working with. And there's also uh, another one called the public-private key, or, or PKI, you may be familiar with uh, hearing it as well. Uh, for this particular question, the focus was on how do I encrypt a string, so we're not going to get into file I.O., encrypting files or anything like that, but the similar methods apply. Uh, it just depends on the type of reader, whether it's a string reader or a stream reader. In this case, we'll create a string and store it in memory. Um, but we'll just show very quickly symmetric encryption and decryption of a simple string value and how we go through the process of doing that. Now, within Visual Studio, uh, within a .NET framework, there are cryptography uh, classes available in the cryptography namespace, and they allow us to deal with various types of encryption standards that, um, that are available today for encrypting the information. So three primary steps. First of all, we'll need to generate some kind of a, a key, some kind of a passcode, some kind of an encryption key that we will use for that, uh, for that encryption process. We then take the string value that we want to encrypt and we call it the encrypt method um, for the provider. and We'll see that in the code in just a moment. We'll encrypt the string using that key. Then we'll show an example of how we can take that same encrypted string and bring it back to the normal text. We'll decrypt it using that same provider and using the passcode or the, the key that we actually implemented. So it's, it's key. Um, that's a terrible way of, of phrasing it. It's important to note that we're using the same key for the encryption and the decryption in this case because it is symmetric. Um, if you don't use the same key, if you don't use the same uh, cryptography provider, you will not get the same text string back again. So again, it's, this, is very, this is a relatively simple uh, example. There's nothing co you know, complex about this. It shows you very quickly how to use some of the uh, encryption functionality within the .NET framework. Let's step out to Visual Studio and have a look at what we, uh, how we can do that. Okay, so the main part of the code that we're going to work with is here on the screen right now. We have uh, a string variable called plain text. And we're going to store some very complicated text string in here that we want to encrypt. So this is plain text that we will encrypt. That's, this is a string we'll use. Uh, we're going to create uh, another highly secure password that we will utilize for this encryption process. Now the thing that's interesting about how we work with the, the particular encryption provider that we're going to use here is we can provide a password or we can generate a key uh, automatically or dynamically within the encryption provider itself. The problem with dynamically generating that key is that it sits in the memory of the computer, so it becomes there's a little more complexity involved that we don't have time to go into for this one here and how to get that key for the decryption process itself. So instead, what we're going to demo is expecting a user to pass in a keyword or a password, and we'll use that, we'll hash it, and we use that hash as a way of actually generating the key that will be used for the encryption itself. So back to the code. We have a couple of console.writeLine statements here that are just simply going to write out the plain text so we can actually see it on the screen so we know what it is, uh, write a blank space. Just Again, this is just making it easier for you to read. Then we're going to create a new instance of our encryption class, and, and we'll pass it in that uh, password as the key. So this is where a lot of the, the uh, information takes place is from this test encrypt class itself. So let's have a look at that class. And notice that my, I'm, I'm using the system.security.cryptography namespace to actually uh, import or bring in that functionality for the encryption. And so in our program.cs, we will create the new instance of test, in, or new instance of DES. Um, so this is a DES encryption standard, DES encrypt, 
called test encrypt, and then we will call the encrypt string and the decrypt string methods on that class. So those methods actually exist here. Here's the encrypt string, and here's the decrypt string, and we'll talk a little bit about those in just a second. Pardon the scrolling. And but here's the, the component, here's the aspect, the static triple DES create DES function is what we use to generate the key for this encryption. So we pass in the key and that happens in the constructor. So we, we create the, or sorry, not on the constructor, but down here when we create the DES uh, within our class, we will take the key that was passed in, which in other words is the user's password. We'll perform an MD5 hash on it by using the MD5 crypto service provider. We will then create a new triple DES object called DES, and this is of type triple DES crypto service provider. This is 3DES, so this is a relatively strong cryptography uh, um, provider that we have available. And those methods are provided by the .NET framework, correct? Correct. Those methods are provided by the .NET framework, so they, uh, the methods that we will use, um, the md5.compute hash is, is a, a member of the MD5 cryptography service provider, and when we do the encrypt, uh, the right encrypt down here, um, I lost it, it's in, here we go, so when we create the, the create encryptor here and we write the information, those are methods that exist within these classes. We'll generate a key, so we'll take the MD5 compute hash and this encoding.unicode.getbytes key pulls back the Unicode representation in a byte array, essentially, mm -hmm. of what that key is. So that password, the text password that we passed in, it will generate the key that we'll use for this encryption. And we also need to create something known as an initialize, initialization vector. I knew I was going to struggle over that word because it's sometimes hard to say. So an initialization vector um, that is utilized within the, uh, the key generation as well. Then we will call the encrypt string method and we will pass in the string and the password and this is where we start getting into all of the mechanics or the functionality. So first we convert our plain text into a byte array. So in order to do, perform the encryption, we want to encrypt the bytes. So we're going to create a byte array called plain text bytes. We will get the bytes from that plain text, so the value that we pass in here. Then we will create, because we're going to do our encryption in memory, this is not a file, we're going to create a memory stream object called mystream that will hold the bytes that we'll work with. We will create the key and the initialization vector using the password. So when we call the create DES password, again, this is our function up here that creates those key and the initialization vector for us. We get that information in an object called DES. Then we need to create the encoder. So this is what we will use to encode the bytes into a uh, encrypted stream. And this is called crypto stream and we create a new crypto stream and as we look at the call to that method or the constructor for that specific class it wants a stream object to work with so it says I need to pull the information from a stream object in which this case is our memory stream object that we created the next argument says what are we doing are we creating an encryptor or a decryptor so which direction are we heading so we're going to call the DES create encryptor method to create an encryptor uh, mechanism and then the mode is called write. So we're going to write out the stream uh, into an encrypted stream. And then we now use that crypto stream to write the byte array to the memory stream. So crypt stream dot write. We take the plain text bytes. So this was the array that we created up here from our plain text value. The zero simply means the offset. So where do I want to start within that byte array? Obviously we want to encrypt the whole stream. So we use zero as the beginning and we tell it to go for the length of that array. So in other words, encrypt the whole array, start from the beginning. And then the flush final block just tells us when we're finished, we need to flush that stream writer. So this is just, if you're used to, to stream writing and file writing, so all of the streams mm -hmm. within, uh, within the .NET framework like you to flush when you're finished to clear out the memory streams or clear out the buffers and make sure that everything works perfectly fine. Then, because we now have a, uh, an encrypted binary stream, we're going to return this thing called convert.toBase64stream, mystream.toArray. So in, in order for us to actually output this on the screen, we want to return the value so that we can actually output the value on the console window so we can see what those encrypted bytes look like. Then we will call the decrypt string functionality, and we have to pass it in the encrypted string 
So in this case, we will pass in the value that we've already encrypted. And that same password, and we will, again, create a byte array from the encrypted text, a new memory stream object. We will create the DES password again. Now, note that it's not going to be a different password this time because, or it won't be a different key for the decryption. And the reason it won't be is because we're, we're issuing the same password. We're utilizing the same MD5 hash algorithm and we're using the same DES provider to create the key. So the key will come out exactly the same. Um, and this is, if you want to know how to potentially hack into this, this is how you could possibly guess uh, what a password might be. If somebody's used a simple password, you can call these methods and just start dumping in string values over and over and over again, trying to find or trying to guess what that password but is. But I was going to ask that question. How, how is this secure? Since anybody with C Sharp can essentially write these methods, the security comes in the fact that that password is only known to the person creating the application and not to the person that may be consuming the application. Is that's, that correct? Yeah. That has to be hidden. Yeah, that's correct. And, and that's a really good point. Um, you, you should never uh, hard code these passwords into your .NET code because we know that when we compile .NET code, it compiles to Microsoft Intermediate Language. And without obfuscation, it's, it's rather easy to go in and take a look at the IL code and kind of figure out what it is. And you would actually see those string values in there. Um, so yeah, rely on the user to provide the password um, and make sure that the passwords are exchanged in a secure manner. So you know, don't send the email with the encrypted string and the password in that email too. That kind of defeats the purpose of the encryption and, and right, so the user will have it. But again, recommend strong passwords. The stronger the password, the less chance of somebody actually guessing. But that's it, so. the weakest spot. So if the, the password, if the password is compromised, then all this encryption and decryption doesn't really matter because the the the, the hacker will be able to access the code yep. exactly by writing a program yep. just like this. Precisely. So, all right. So, uh, and again, you know, the key is that it's focusing on that encryption provider. As long as you know the encryption provider, they can guess sure. the password. So, um, so yeah, and and then we'll create this uh, a decrypt stream this time. So it's another crypto stream, but it's a decrypt stream. And notice that the method that we call this time is the create decryptor as opposed to the create encryptor because we are going to decrypt the string. And we'll still pass in the crypto stream in this way, write method again because we're, we're again, we're writing it back out to that memory stream. And so we will write, we will take the encrypted bytes, that array, again, starting at zero, and go for the entire length of the array. And then we will flush the final block again. We'll convert it back to a string value so that we can output it to the console. So that's a long-winded explanation of what we're doing. Let's execute the code and see what happens. So a little control F5. And in our console window, this is plain text that we will encrypt. Then our console.outline line simply says encrypted text. This is not a part of the encrypted text. This I actually wrote that in the, mm -hmm. in the code. But this is the encrypted text. So this the value that we're seeing here in these two lines is actually this string of characters in encrypted form by using triple DES encryption. And then we use the decryptor function and we go ahead and we decrypt that encrypted string back and we see that, yep, we get back the same text that we put in. So that's the, that's the quick and simple um, of how to encrypt and decrypt a string. In your um, in your code, is it possible to pass in a different password for the decryptor to show what happens if we try to decrypt the string with a different password? Yeah, so actually it is. And, and um, in order for us to do that, we'll step back to the code here for a second. And because of the way the program is functioning is I'm actually passing in a the password here in the encrypt string. And so as Paul mentioned, what happens if we pass in a different one? So let's um, call this... I have no idea how I managed to get those two values mm -hmm. in there. So let's call this one um, a D-pass, and this one will be the one that we'll attempt to use for the decryption password. Um, and we'll just simply call this doesn't work, because it won't. Um, so we call this doesn't work, and that will be the password that we will actually send into the decrypted version. So in this case, we'll call this uh, D-pass. And then this way, when the string encrypts, it will encrypt with this password, which is PA dollar sign dollar sign W0RD. When it decrypts, it will attempt to do so with this one. Let's watch what happens. Control F5. Oops, we have crashed the application. Okay. And so basically, what happened here is that it knows that it's attempting to decrypt this string. 
and it says bad data. So you can just kind of make out what this actually says here. Bad data is the unhandled exception. And that's the reason the program crashed. We're not handling the exception. Um, but it, again, it points out the key aspect that Paul was trying to mention is we didn't give it the right password. It doesn't know how to decrypt the string. So the application crashed. Um, you should obviously write code an exception handler if you're going to do this to ensure that the password that does get passed in doesn't, you know, doesn't malfunction, in which case you would catch this bad data exception and you would handle it appropriately. You might send a, a, a message back to the user saying, oh, sorry, wrong password, uh, de you know, decryption failed, uh, you can't have access to this, whatever you want to put in the message itself. But again, you know, a, a key differentiator was those passwords have to be the same as well as we could, we could generate the same or a different error, but still crash the application if we use a different encryption or decryption mm -hmm. provider. So, Correct. yeah, it's a good point. Thanks, Paul. So there we have it. We've encrypted and decrypted a string successfully and unsuccessfully by changing the password. So.